the movie is about uh, Sasha's character, the dictator, who is uh, uh, the dictator of, the, of this country called Wadia, and kind of a kind of spectacularly insane, you know, megalomaniacal character. And he travels to the U.S. to give a speech to the U.N. is is kind of overthrown by his right hand man, who's played by Sir Ben Kingsley. Uh, and as he's one, he becomes like powerless and is wandering around New York. He meets up with me, who he knows from his home country, and we kind of are working to try and get him back in power. Meanwhile, he meets Anna Ferris's character, who he kind of starts to fall for. Um, and through falling in love with her and his machinations with me, we managed to kind of get him back in power, but in a way that is hopefully or perhaps not exactly as a more benign, a uh, more benevolent dictator than when he started. The character I play is called Nadal, and he is um, Sasha's, uh, or he's the dictator's <clears throat> nuclear scientist, the guy that's building his arsenal of nuclear weapons to wipe out the West. Um, and uh, early in the movie, he has me assassinated, but in reality, I'm not assassinated. Uh, the resistance gets me over to the States. And then when Sasha winds up in the States, I wind up meeting up with him. And I'm basically, I basically become his sidekick. And I'm, if he's a, you know, idiot, buffoon, crazy person, then I'm the straight man who constantly has to kind of keep him on track and has to deal with his insane ideas and theories. The reason he has me killed is because he's angry that the nuclear missile, missile that I've built is not pointy enough because he wants it to fly and stick into the ground. And it's rounded at the top, as I explained, because the shape of the missile doesn't mean anything. It's not, it, the, it doesn't have to stick into the ground. It explodes above its target. And he says, no, no, no. I've, I've seen many films and the missile sticks into the ground and then we get into an argument because I'm like, I don't think you've seen films, I'm pretty sure you're talking about cartoons. And then that starts us into a whole thing about cartoons that is endless. He rules his country like, you know, like a child, like a child tyrant. You know, he changes the words on and off both to his first name, Aladdin. He thinks, you know, he, he makes all of his uh, all of his army are beautiful women that he sleeps with. He's like he's an idiot. He's basically just like a child. Uh, he's all like id. All his desires, everything. He's very um, he, he's very capricious. He's like he's 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 a crazy person. It's like it's a man. It's a it's like a maniac ruling a country. But we, it, but in a in a way that's really hilarious and terrifying. That scene in the helicopter, first of all, was brutal because we shot it like in the middle of the summer on the tarmac at an airfield in like 110 degrees. It was like 110 degrees in the helicopter. We were like, I think I lost like five pounds that day just sweating. Um, but it's a, it's a really funny scene. It's the two of us um, speaking our pretend language to each other, uh, talking, about, talking about fairly benign stuff, but that the phrases we keep using seem to trigger in the other people, for the other people in the helicopter, the two Americans, seem to trigger fear that they are about to be part of a terrorist attack. Because we're, we're talking about Porsche 911s, we're which, you know, we, we keep saying everything, but not, and everything is in our fake language except for the phrase 911. Or we keep talking about like, you know, he's talking about fireworks over the Statue of Liberty, but he's saying Statue of Liberty, you know. So everything seems to them like they're in a helicopter with terrorists. My background's improv comedy. Like, this was like a, a dream job to be able to just be this kind of creative and this much a part of the process. And he's an amazing person to work with because he's just somebody that's very easy to go toe to toe with improv wise. It was great. Being in a Sasha Baron Cohen movie is like amazing. Uh, you know, he, he's somebody that like, me and my friends, when we started doing comedy, you know, in New York in the early 2000s, like those tapes of the first Ali G show, the UK Ali G show, 
were like, we passed those around, everybody watched those, and they were like, they were amazing to us. And so uh, the idea that now, 10 years later, I get to be in like a huge comedy movie with that guy is like amazing. It's like, uh, you know, phenomenal. I think people like that he's like completely outrageous, completely, you know, like just, I, I think especially in those, in Borat or Bruno or in the Ali G show or whatever, like I think people really, I think people respond to how extreme the situations he puts himself into are, you know, especially because those take place in the real world. And I think those, you, you it's a, it seems funnier when you recognize the actual danger that he's in sometimes. And that's, it's, it's, it's more visceral, and there's something really compelling about it. Uh, on top of that, I just happen to find those characters, like, so funny. And I like that he's almost always making himself the fool, you know? That's a very compelling character to insert into those. I inserting a buffoon into high-stakes situations, I think that's funny. When I watched the movie, the scene that I laughed the hardest at, maybe because I wasn't in it, so I had no, I wasn't prepared for it, was the birthing scene in the market where the where Catherine Hahn has a baby in in the supermarket. That just made me laugh. I thought that was insanity. Uh, that really cracked me up.